When you think of the Winnipeg Jets, especially since relocation from Atlanta in 2011, they are a team that is drafted exceptionally well. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. When you look at the Jets and you look at the star players that are on this team, they weren't guys that were traded for and they weren't guys that signed here in free agency. The Jets pride themselves on being one of the top tier teams with scouting. They have one of the highest, if not the highest, scouting budget in the NHL, and there's a good reason for that. The Jets are not a free agent hotbed, and they never will, so they have to put their money and their time into scouting and finding talent and growing it from within the system. And in this video, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about something that hasn't really been labeled ever on a Winnipeg Jets high round draft pick, and that is the word, a bust. The Jets, like I said, have drafted exceptionally well since coming back into the league. But today we're going to be focusing on what, in my opinion, the real first screw-up, mistake, bust player that they selected within the first round since coming back in 2010-11. Let's jump into it, and before we actually go through and talk about which player you guys probably think that is, even though if you've already read the title, you know, let's focus on the draft picks that were good and just show why this is really a first for this franchise to have a bust in about 11 years of seasons in Winnipeg. So let's go switch over and go through the Winnipeg Jets drafting from 2011 all the way up to current. So as you can see right there, our first ever selection, as you all know, Mark Shifley at 7 from the Barry Colts. And when you look over at his stats in 642 games, I think it's safe to say that Shifley was a safe pick. Now whether or not you want him traded or not, and I am on the team of possibly trading Mark Shifley, I think that could be a potential move that we see happen in the near future. I still think that Mark Shifley was easily one of the best trick choices and options in that draft, even though at the time it seemed like a reach. And when you look at all the other guys you got in that draft, and Adam Lowry in the third round, you can't complain. These guys are still on the team all these years later. You go through 2012, Jacob Truba, another really good player that played 597 games for this franchise. And then, oh look, who went in the fifth round that year? Connor Hellebuck. So the drafting the Jets have been able to do in the first two years, you get in the first round an easy hit, you get a gold Vesna winning goaltender with your fifth round pick, and in the first few years you get a, a franchise center and then another depth center within your third pick. So already two drafts in, Jets are looking good. You go up, Josh Morrissey, Eric Comrie, Andrew Kopp, a fourth round pick, Tucker Pullman, a fifth round pick. All these guys playing substantial games with the Jets. Look at the amount of games played, and you already know these guys have spent a lot of time within the NHL and within the Jets system. Nikolai Ehlers, you know, Nelson Noje, uh, Chase DeLeo. These are guys that spent time with the Moose. Again, involved with the franchise for a number of years. 2015, Kyle Connor, Jack Rosovic, Jansen Harkins, Mason Appleton, Sammy Niku, the list goes on. 2016-17, Patrick Laine, Logan Stanley, Jake, um, Luke Green, all these other guys, Mikael Burden, a sixth round pick, guys still involved with the franchise. All these later round picks have one thing in common, they're still good hockey players and you're finding talent later in the draft. Then you get up to 2017. Christian Veselainen, number 24 overall in the first round, Dylan Sandberg in the second round, Leon Ganock, another good up-and-coming prospect on the Moose, Arvid Holmes, same situation, 2018 draft, David Gustafson, Nathan Smith, who is no longer with us, Declan Chisholm, guys, again, late-round talent you're finding, 2019, Billy Hainola, Simeon Lundmark, Henry Nyken, all these guys are good prospects, even though we haven't seen a lot of them at the NHL level, minus Billy Hainola from that draft, 2020, obviously no, Cole Perfetti, Torgensen, these are good prospects, Perfetti's looking like he's going to be a hell of an NHLer, you get to last year's draft, Lucius, Cheburkov, uh, Ryshevsky, all these guys are good players again, too early on to tell whether or not they're going to be a stars, busts, or whatever. So out of everybody that I just went through on that list, who do you think we're going to be talking about in this video? Well, if you already read the title, you know it's Christian Veselainen. Christian Veselainen is without a doubt the first real bust the Jets have ever had come into their system. And whether or not it be for the use of development, uh, or lack of development, I should say, or just not, you know, hitting all the cards right, it doesn't really matter. Because at 24, you don't expect to get some elite prospect. But then again, like you just all saw, the Jets have a tendency of finding gems in later rounds. So the fact that for their first round pick, they missed this badly on a guy that in 70 NHL games has five points. And when you look at the guys that even went after him, you know, yeah. 
the Jets messed up on Christian Fesselainen. So let's jump over and talk more about that draft in particular and see the guys that went around Christian Fesselainen. So as you can see, you have a lot of really good, talented players that went before that 24th overall pick. Nico Heischer first in that draft, Nolan Patrick, Nero Heiskanen, Cal McCarr, Pedersen, Cody Glass, Leis Anderson, Casey Middlestat. The list goes on. Nick Suzuki. You've got so many good players in here. And like I said already, that Nick Suzuki draft pick at 13 of Vegas initially was the one that paid Jets draft pick. So... If you don't trade to defend, uh, to keep Tobias Enstrom and expose uh, Christian uh, and make them take, take, excuse me, Stanley Cup champion Chris Thorburn, you know you might have a better draft pick, and we might be making a different video here about how the Chris, the Nick Suzuki was one of the most underrated picks. But I digress. Different realities that might have happened. But let's focus on Christian Veselainen. As you can see, right there to Winnipeg, 24th overall. And you look at his stats, and these are the NHL numbers, by the way, in case you get confused. So like I said, 70 NHL games played. Two goals, three assists, five points. Now look at the guys that have surrounded him. You have a Ryan, Ryan Paling that goes just after him. Again, 85 games played, 22 points. I think that, again, is not bad, but you'd want to, you know, would you take Ryan Paling over Christian Veselainen at this point? I think I would. You go down. Jake Ottinger. Just to put it into perspective, 77 games played as a goalie. He's still got three damn points. Christian Veselainen is five. A goalie is two points shy of Christian Veselainen for his total NHL point totals. Yeah, you heard that right. Morgan Frost, another good pro prospect. Again, a guy who's 77 games is showing more than what Veselainen has showed. Henry jo uh, Henry Jokaro, another a really good player. Eli Tolvanen, good player. Like Kim Costin, good player. Again, maybe not as good as what you would want from Veselainen or you can compare them equal, but these are guys that would you take them now in hindsight? Yes, hindsight's 2020. We know this is different. I'm not just picking apart the Jets management for screwing up and not picking these guys that went after them because at the time I liked this Veselainen pick. I bet a lot of you did too, but I'm just comparing what we have with Veselainen at this point compared to what other teams have. And even going into the second round, you look and not that many picks down, we get Dylan Sandberg in the second round. Dylan Sandberg, already in 14 games played at the NHL, has the exact same amount of points as Christian Veselainen as a defenseman. So yes, when you look at all the other guys that went around him, even Alexander Texier going to Columbus, just not that far after him. You got all these other guys going in there that are really good players. Like, really good players. Nicholas Haig going 34th in that draft in the second round to Vegas. These are good players, and the Jets passed on all these guys because Veselainen was the one they wanted because that's what the scouts told them. Now, I'm not going to knock the franchise. This isn't what this video is about. It's just presenting the knowledge and facts as they are. When you look at the players that went around Christian Veselainen, and you look at what Christian Veselainen has done, not even in his AHL numbers and NHL numbers, just everything in the last four years of hockey, it hasn't been that impressive. The last time Veselainen did anything really productive in North American hockey would be way back when in 2019-20 where he had 30 points in 60 games with the Manitoba Moose and even then for a 24th overall first round pick who had top 6 potential that's not exactly what you want to see from the AHL numbers especially when you look at what other players have put up that have went that are you know younger than him and are showing more promise in and even that went later than him with the Moose so the Jets numbers are very disappointing those underlying NHL numbers are terrible 70 goals I mean, 70 games, excuse me, I wish it was 70 goals, 2 goals, 3 assists, 5 points, you don't want to see that, especially when the Jets are at this point right now, where they're having aging, an aging core that's still, you know, coming into their prime, and, you know, they still have a lot of years left to be really good players, but you want to be able to replace that depth, you want to bring in the youth, you want to enforce the youth. The Jets can't really do that with Veselin anymore. They gave him a full season this year. This was his first real full year with the Jets. He had spent 12 games with them in 2020. Last year, in 2018-19, he spent 5 games uh, with the Jets. This year, he spends 53 games with the Winnipeg Jets. 3 points this season in 53 games. Now, I know he didn't play the most minutes, but he had opportunity as well. More opportunity than I would say than other guys got at times. We had Christian Veselin playing more in the top 6 this year than we did with Cole Perfetti at the start of the year and even in the, going into the middle of the year. Manitoba Moose, that's the stat you guys want to look at right now. Five points in 16 games. And this is a guy that jumped in and played top six on a Moose team that's going to the playoffs. That is pretty good this year. So I think it's safe to say when you look at all the facts of what Veselainen has been able to do with his career in the past, I don't go, I would guess say three years. I think it's time that we have to finally bring out the bust label and apply it to Christian Veselainen. This is a guy that all of us had hopes for, but at the end of the day, the facts are undisputable. 
And when you even go in and look at some of his draft profiles, you know, you go in and look at his hockey DB stuff, and you look about what he was going, uh, you know, the stuff that was said about him going into that draft. He plays a high versatile, high tempo offense game, battles for pucks and space, a beast along the wall, difficult to move in front of the net. This is stuff we've never seen from Christian Veselainen. The guy had one of the hardest shots in the draft, and we never, ever, ever see it. You go over and switch over to an article coming before the draft way back when in, what, 2017 from Sharks Nation, a uh, basically the legal curve for the Sharks, and um, you read the draft, uh, draft report on him, the good, the bad. I want to come back down here and just point out this. Questions surrounding Veselainen's production are a concern, but he's still young, so he can be expected to improve as he becomes more comfortable with the pro game and as he matures. Well, newsflash, he's had time to mature at the AHL and NHL level. This is a guy, like I've said, who hasn't played less than 50 games. He's played 70 NHL games. Now, I know those have been spaced out and all numbers come into consideration, but at 22 years old, Look at the prospects that are jumping around him. Cole Perfetti is going to be in that top six next year. That's a spot that Veselainen could have had, but didn't. Chaz Lucius just signs his ELC. I'd say he's potentially two years away from getting a look with the Jets. Not a full-timer, but a look, just like how Cole Perfetti got a look. The Jets are able to develop forward prospects faster than they are with defense. They always take their time with defense. And even then, the defensive side of things, you've got defensive prospects putting up better offensive numbers than a forward that was supposed to be a very skilled uh, top six forward that can play and be a net front presence hard on the walls, big, dig out puck battles, and with a really good shot and release. We have not seen any of this from Veselainen. Even then, going back to when he was with the Moose with 30 points, even then, he wasn't some hard-hitting, really lethal shooter and goal scorer. He was a good uh, a, like secondary option on a top six line. Veselainen, at this point, I don't see much for him with the Jets. I think he's trade bait, and even then doesn't have much value, and I don't see him being a part of the future of this club going forward into next and the further on seasons. So, at the end of the day, going through what we've already went through about all of our Jets draft picks, looking at how they've been able to draft over the years, and everything taken into consideration, I think it is time that we finally label Christian Veselainen a bust. So with all that being said, let me know what your thoughts are on Christian Veselainen. Is he a bust? Do you still think there's hope for him? What are your thoughts on him? And do you think there are any other busts or missed opportunities the Jets have really had come through the draft and they've passed on? Let me know what all your thoughts are down in the comment section below. As always, if you're new to the channel, regardless of the team that you root for, definitely consider dropping a subscription and turning on the bell notification. It's a great way to show support for the channel. Thank you guys so much for all the support as of lately. It means the world to me. And like I always like to say, without you guys watching and leaving comments and telling me I've been talking and communicating with me within the videos I make, I wouldn't be making them. So thank you guys for showing interest and liking the content that I put out there for you. So with all that being said, peace, love, and positivity as always. Go down in the description, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and check out all the other affiliated links. Uh, subscribe, like I've already said. Have a great rest of your day. Peace, love, and positivity as always. Go Jets go! Go Moose go! Go Ice go! We got a playoff run for two of the teams in the city. Jets, not so much. Let's stay tuned for my playoff bracket, or check out my playoff bracket. I don't know when the videos will be coming out, but they will be out. Nonetheless, have a great rest of your day. Go Jets go, and bye bye